In September of 2022, an interview with Harry Styles and Chris Pine was released by Fred Film Radio as part of their press junket for the upcoming film Don't Worry Darling. This interview has now become iconic due to a 10 second clip of Harry Styles that has been memed to hell and back. When trying to describe the themes of the movie, he says, You know, my favorite thing about the movie is like, it feels like a, like a movie. We all laughed at the sheer emptiness of that statement. But then my own laughter turned to a single question. Could I really describe the cinematic feeling of a piece of media any better than he did? And haven't I even regurgitated this same sentiment in my past videos? Something I find myself doing often is saying a manga I read felt like an indie film. One of those introspective drama stories that would have had its aesthetic shots reblogged on Tumblr by droves of depressed teens. That isn't a shot at anyone but myself back in college. I've read so many manga with this movie-like quality, but the reason why I thought this way always eluded me. Why is it that certain manga made me feel like I was reading a movie. Who am I to laugh at Harry Styles when I too can't express why something felt the way that it did? It wasn't until this past month that once again a manga made me feel like I was Nicole Kidman in that one AMC ad. Like I was experiencing a motion picture in a theater when I was looking at still images on my couch. This was a manga that gave me such a visceral emotion that I finally decided to look into this phenomenon that kept happening to me. When when I first read the shoujo manga series My Girlfriend's Child by Mamoru Aoi, I knew that something about it felt cinematic. Now, before we can really dive into the topic at hand, it would be worthwhile to take a look at what cinematic even means. The word often has different implications for different people, but across any medium, you could at least infer that the word has positive connotation when used. You might hear someone say a YouTube video looks cinematic, a video game, or a TV show. Even books get called cinematic despite not having any pictures at all. So what are we trying to convey when we describe media in this way? Is it the scale of the world, the feeling, or the visuals of a film that can be used to make other mediums cinematic? The definition of cinematic is relating to, suggestive of, or suitable for motion pictures, which is pretty vague. However, what helped me in my own understanding of the term was a video by Patrick H. Willems. He defines the word cinematic as processing the quality that comes from effectively using the tools of cinema to tell a story or an idea in a way that would not be possible in another medium. I feel that this explanation gets down to more of the root idea of what the term could mean. Movies have been around for over a hundred years now, and they've created their own distinct visual languages. We know Know how a movie is supposed to feel and look because we've all probably watched more than a handful in our lifetimes. Even if you don't know what a term for a certain technique is, we all know what a close-up shot is when we see it, and we can analyze the purpose it serves in a film. The universal understanding of a movie is ingrained in most of us. In the same way that we all learn to read, we all learn to understand movies at a young age. Over time, this can influence our own perception of reality. Ever been on a bus with your headphones on and you're looking out the window and thought, man, I feel like I'm in a movie right now. Yeah, it's kind of like that. You've seen movies, so you understand how a movie scene might play out to enhance the atmosphere it wants to create. Due to this influenced reality, other creators can imitate the visual language of film and use it in their own works, with manga specifically having been hugely impacted by the shorthands of film. Considered to be the godfather of manga, Osamu Tezuka was heavily influenced by Disney and films when creating his works. While manga as a medium has existed for a very long time, the images used to be much more static, and the stories were very short. For girls' comics or shoujo manga, they hardly even had an overarching narrative at all. When Tezuka began making manga, he revolutionized the way that stories were told going forward by introducing a more cinematic style. He simulated the editing and cinematography of film through panel layouts with close-ups and zoom-ins. A sequence of panel layouts are similar to that of cuts, edits, or old-school 
school film reels. Showing a character noticing an object, having them look that way, then showing the object in three consecutive panels is a purposeful compositional shorthand that is used by film that manga has adapted. In this way, manga can feel inherently cinematic even despite its lack of moving pictures. Okay, so let's bring this back around to the manga at hand my girlfriend's child. This was a series that had just come out in English that I was incredibly excited to get my hands on. It's critically acclaimed in Japan and not to mention just recently won an award. So when I cracked the book open for the first time, I knew that I was in for an experience, but the experience that I got was even more than I hoped. The manga took me on such a heart-dropping, poignant, and moving journey in just one volume alone that once I got to the last page, I set the book down and I said, it feels like a movie. The story is a very simple setup. We follow a high school girl named Sachi who has been dating her boyfriend Takara for some time now. The two are very close and they've gotten to that point in their relationship of being intimate with each other. However, lately Sachi has been feeling off. She's been eating more, getting sick to the point of skipping school, and has been sleepier than usual. She finally works up the courage one day to go buy a pregnancy test, and when she takes it in the bathroom stall of a diner, she sees the positive sign appear. Sachi is obviously in turmoil as we focus on her confusion and the fear of this new unknown world. I feel like the plot alone for this manga is very movie-esque. That's possibly the Juno fan in me, but it's hardly just the plot of this series that constitutes it as cinematic. There has to be something more purposeful, something that uses those tools of cinema to tell a story. What sets My Girlfriend's Child apart is really its use of two key film languages. The composition of the panels and the pacing or rhythm that it creates through its paneling, both of which are used masterfully in this series. The composition of shots is a deliberate choice in film of how an object is shown or placed within a frame. These objects within frame could be a setting, something inanimate, or even the character themselves. For movies, this is what we would be seeing on the screen. If it's a close-up of an actor, what are they portraying in that close-up by their framing? This could be a visual cue of the actor in the bottom of the frame to show disorientation or an actor being viewed from below to show authority. How a character or an object is framed within a shot is a choice made by the creator to convey the importance of a character or their emotional state without using words. Even for this video, I've made my own compositional choices to make me seem more knowledgeable. I've placed myself in the center and I've filled the background with manga. I even wore this blazer, which I really only did for this bit, and now I'm gonna take it off because I've actually been sweating this whole time. I am visually showing you in the frame my credentials or authority without having to tell you directly. Since manga is also a visual medium, we can ask these same questions about composition in film and apply them to my girlfriend's child. One of the biggest uses of composition is to give us a perspective into a character or the world we are seeing. These perspectives can be from the vantage point of the character or as someone completely removed watching from the sidelines. This would be referred to as subjective and objective perspectives. Subjective perspective gives us the emotional viewpoint of the person that we are seeing, seeking to ground us in that person's experiences, while objective perspectives is when we watch a scene play out as an omniscient observer. This perspective gives us information without any one person's viewpoint as the focus. The opening sequence of four panels is such a beautifully written introduction and a a perfect use of these perspectives. It is what invites us into the world of our main character, Sachi. We start in an establishing shot of a snowy road where Sachi's narration begins, telling us the meaning of her name, but that despite this, everyone calls her by her nickname, Fuku. We are then shown on the second page an objective viewpoint as the audience. This not only introduces Sachi to us as a character, but also gives us an insight on how she is as a person. She's standing alone in the cold, looking pensive and reflecting on something. The narration is telling us only one person calls her Sachi, 
The tree and the road draw our eye towards her as she is off center in the frame. In the next succession of panels, we have now approached her closer as an observer of this scene. Sachi's side profile is right next to us, like we're a person who is about to walk right up to her. But then the very next panel, she looks right at us. We as the audience are no longer an objective observer in her life. We're in her subjective perspective from then on. As a reader, we have now been pulled into having a direct emotional connection with Sachi as we've been introduced into this subjective lens, letting us into her boyfriend Takara's subjective perspective by proxy. Along with perspectives, the framing of each panel is used for intentional composition, each drawn purposefully to enhance the story and emotion it wants to convey to us as the reader. What is shown within every frame is meant to evoke a reaction in us through visual cues. One which sequence of panels happens right at the end of chapter one in the manga, where Sachi is in the diner and taking the pregnancy test for the first time. The use of POV and subjective shots actively keeps us in Sachi's shoes throughout the climactic three pages. There's a POV of her looking at the test, then opening it. During this, her inner thoughts show us that she's confused on what exactly to do with the test. We then see one objective shot of her on the toilet that makes her look very small and enclosed while sitting in the stall. She's surrounded by several objects like a trash can, sink, and the soap dispenser though, so she's not entirely isolated just yet. This moves right into one page that consists of two panels. The first is Sachi looking down and out of frame. We can infer what she's looking at, but we still feel a sense of dread creeping in since we ourselves cannot see what she is looking at. Sachi is positioned in the frame in a lower third and off to the side. The framing of the shot shows her as someone small compared to the wide room. In addition, it gives us the feeling of being boxed in, as the corner of this bathroom is drawn in the space she doesn't occupy. It fills the majority of the panel, making us just as anxious and concerned as Sachi is at this moment, giving us her subjective perspective as well to hammer in the emotion. The second panel is the exact same composition, yet this time her eyes have gone wide as she sees something we still don't see, ending the first chapter on a single POV of her positive pregnancy test. Every moment of these three pages are composed in a way to make you feel something. It gives you all the visual information you need to tell how Sachi is feeling in that moment, while hardly giving you any dialogue to tell you how she feels. Similarly to most film, there is no voiceover or narration for this part. Only her expressions and the composition let us into her emotional state. You can tell from the closed in space, the character's expression from their subjective perspective and their position within the frame that we are meant to feel frightened and anxious, like a person who has just been trapped in a box with nowhere to go. Composition is not entirely special to just film though. It's also used in other things like paintings or photography. So composition alone isn't creating this cinematic feeling to the series. The combination of composition with pacing is what film uses to make the final product feel cohesive, feel, Cinematic. My Girlfriend's Child does this by setting a slower pace to the series to match the more emotional and dramatic storytelling Aoi wants to achieve, spending several panels on establishing scenes or objects that create an atmosphere which the reader can easily place themselves in. There are several instances to the slower rhythm set by the series, but for now we're going to be focusing on one that happens towards the end of chapter one. Sachi is shown sitting on a train to a destination we are still unsure of as the reader. Once again, we are put in a subjective perspective as well as a POV while Sachi is looking around the train. The first panel we see is of the people catty corner to her. One person is standing and one is taking a nap. We understand this is Sachi's POV because in the panel after, we see her looking in their direction to infer we are following her eyes. The next panel is a mother and son across from her where we are directly placed behind Sachi's head to get her POV, showing that she is looking right at them now. We are then zoomed in on this parent and child because Sachi 
is so focused on them. As readers, we're still not entirely sure why until the end of the chapter, but we know something is bothering Sachi as we see her intense stare in the first panel of the next page. Panels after this moment establish that time is passing gradually while we too are also moving about this world with Sachi. The train moves with more people riding. The train platform, a busy street outside of the station, and then a wide shot of a store outside of the station. All of these panels of a bustling city life are established as Sachi's POV, since the first panel after is a close-up of Sachi's eyes looking at the store. They set our own pace as the reader, forcing us to slow down and take in this environment along with Sachi, setting the rhythm for how we consume the rest of the chapters from then on. It was the intention of the author to make us follow every one of Sachi's movements before she arrives at the destination. Mamoru Aoi could have shown us the scene on the train without focusing on anything else except for the mother and the child. Aoi could have also ended the scene on the panel of the mother and then placed us directly in front of the store that Sachi was going to. However, these moments of establishing the world create an atmosphere and make the series feel slower, more dramatic. These moments feel like holds in film that keep your attention on an object longer than you expect. It creates an atmosphere of taking in all your surroundings and being hyper aware of every small detail. While you can look at each panel for as long as you want, the series forces you to view scenes in deeper detail by filling a full page with three different panels of varying sizes and perspectives, making you feel as though you looked at them longer. Focusing on these mundane actions can also bring meaning to them or create a sense of tension for the reader. Even though I have called this manga cinematic throughout this video, it's still not a movie. It's a manga. A manga that borrows from that cinematic language of film. However, even when My Girlfriend's Child uses its own unique visual language to shoujo, it uses those in a way that considers the theories of film. The composition, the perspective, the framing, and the pacing. While still being uniquely shoujo, Aoi implements outside influence of films into her work. As with any artistic medium, the best way to understand the visual languages it develops is by consuming a lot of it. Examining the history or the influences that a genre has perfected over the years is how you can gain understanding into the meaning or intention of what is shown on page. For shoujo, like with film, there's a certain visual shorthand that is specific to this demographic of manga that has been honed throughout its 60 plus years of history. After reading as much shoujo as possible, you can begin to understand the visual shorthand and tropes within it, utilizing them in a way that breaks what you know. Just like how film can't entirely be replicated in other mediums, neither can shoujo manga. Two visual shorthands that crop up in My Girlfriend's Child are ones that have been used since the inception of this demographic. They are often attributed to shoujo specifically, with one even being named after this type of manga. The use of all white panels and the use of the shoujo sparkle. Even though these two things are uniquely shoujo, Mamoru Aoi's use of them is employed purposefully and with reservation. Firstly, shoujo's use of white space is a way to convey the flow of time in a series. When there are descending blank white panels, it often symbolizes a fade out of sorts or a time change to a new day. Other times, backgrounds are left all white to show that time has stopped. It could be related to that of a slow motion shot in film, where you can show the emotion of a character in a short time frame. The visual use of white in shoujo manga is also used in My Girlfriend's Child. Not only as a way to convey a slowdown of time and space, but also as a compositional tool. For example, when Sachi returns to her table after seeing the positive pregnancy test, the panel fades out all the background, just leaving her shrouded in white. Time has stopped for her. There is nothing around her. Prior, we have seen the bustling city while she felt isolated, but now she doesn't even have the city around her. Without dialogue, we know the isolation and dread she feels in this one intentional frame. Similarly, this is used in a pivotal scene in chapter one where Sachi finds the neighborhood cat Nora that she's been looking for, 
possibly dead on the side of the street. We get a full page where Sachi is searching for Nora after hearing her meows, slowing that pace down to give us the anxiety of looking for a lost cat. We are then shown Sachi going into the street and looking right with a close-up of her eyes losing their spark. The next panel pans out to her in the middle of the road, alone and on the left side of the frame, showing how she is small and things are out of her control. At this point, we are an objective viewer, but then we are shown what she is looking at. Nora on the ground with the background still visible. Then, Nora's back paw shrouded in white. Flipping the page, you get a full spread of Sachi still frozen in place on that same street in the same position. However, this time, the background is slowly fading around her, and time is in the midst of freezing. The use of white makes this succession of panels that much more devastating and hit that much harder. In combination with Sachi's small placement within the frame, as well as the fade out of the white background, we can more confidently understand the intention of what we are being shown. Sachi is powerless to fate and the course of life. She may have people around her, but she still feels alone. We feel this loneliness along with her because we feel an attachment to her by now, just like she does with Nora. Lastly, let's discuss the use of the shoujo sparkle in this manga, as I feel it is one of the most important parts of the storytelling. Shoujo sparkles, as a visual shorthand are used to signify the heart palpitating electricity of love, romance, or excitement. That static shock you feel when something is said or done that shoots right through your heart. This doesn't even have to be a romantic gesture. It could just be something that made a character feel happy. The character's heart skips a beat and the shoujo sparkles appear. Mamoru Aoi's other work, Koino Hajimari, is full of the shoujo sparkle, as it's a much more upbeat shoujo romance series. Stars, rectangles, and orbs are gently shaded and flow through the panels to bring that tingling to a scene between characters. It frames the panels and guides your eye throughout the page while also giving you that visual shorthand that a character's heart is racing. On the contrary, in My Girlfriend's Child, the shoujo sparkle is used sparingly. Through the first volume of the manga, we only see hints of the usual sparkle on three different occasions. Knowing how the sparkle Sparkle is usually employed in shoujo, as well as knowing that Aoi's series are usually laced with this excitement, we can tell that these moments where the sparkle does appear are meant to mean something more. These sparkles are scarcely used to create impact, to create a visual meaning without having to use words or dialogue to say these things. You know the moment a sparkle is shown that the words or actions have given a sense of relief in a manga that has been full of anxiety. We're put at ease along with Sachi and Takara. The first time the sparkle appears is when Sachi decides to protect Takara's future. She touches his back, the first time in which she offers comfort to him, and fuzzy orbs frame her hand. They flow into the next panel surrounding Sachi's inner resolve. The second shoujo sparkle is more subtle, when Takara takes Sachi's hand to comfort her. It pops up for just a moment in a previous panel before we even see their hands touching. It gives us an indicator that something just made Sachi's heart skip, before seeing why that happened. The same thing happens on the third implementation, where Sachi receives a text from Takara before making her decision to go visit a clinic. We are shown an objective perspective of Sachi laying in the fetal position on the bed, quickly followed by a close-up of her phone with the sparkle leading into it. The message is not shown, but we know that when it's opened, it'll lighten our hearts. Something good is waiting beyond the dark void Sachi is currently in. Something good which she still does not know about. All three times show the reader that this moment holds more weight for the character. Intentionally holding back on the shoujo sparkle during other romantic moments show us that these moments are that much more meaningful, giving the characters resolve more intimacy between each other. These words, moments, and comfort are what gives the characters a sense of happiness. 
There is so much special about My Girlfriend's Child in the narrative and the messaging, but the way that everything is so intentionally drawn out and carefully crafted makes the series feel fully realized in even just one volume. Aoi's use of pacing, composition, perspective, and shoujo visuals comes together to make this an incredibly thought-provoking and introspective piece of work. One that is not only able to use the language of shoujo to its advantage, but the language of film as well, culminating in a truly unique experience when reading. Cinematic as a word may be an overused term. It may even be frowned on by film buffs or critics as a way to describe media outside of film. But if any manga deserves the description of cinematic, it's my girlfriend's child. Each frame tells us a story. Each frame has a purpose. The love of movies and the love for manga is put on full display by Mamoru Aoi in this series.